Hi, I'm Callum Delieto, and today we're here at London Victoria to visit Janet Hogman, the Chief People Officer of EDF Energy. Hi Janet, thank you for taking Hello. the time to speak with us. Um, the first question that I wanted to ask really was kind of mirroring your, your business in that you have a side that generates power and then you have a side that, that, that buys it. Um, when it comes to recruitment, I guess you could, you could draw a similar um, comparison in that you have sort of growing your talent internally and then recruiting and what do you do for those two different processes at EDF Energy? Well, our overall orientation would be to bring in talent at a sort of early stage and then grow it. So fundamentally, that would be what we're trying to do. I mean, obviously, we can't always do that. And sometimes we have to recruit in at more senior levels, but that's what we're aiming to do. And what we're looking for at the beginning of somebody's career, and I mean, we're recruiting something up to 2,000 people every year, many of whom come in through one of our graduate or apprentice programs, not all, obviously. Uh, what we're looking for is people that can really fulfil a future potential of technical and professional capability combined with leadership. And then um, once they're in the business, mm. you know, we spend quite a lot, we've got a very strong culture here, so we spend quite a lot of time and effort trying to help them understand the behaviours we're looking for, whether it be through mentoring or other processes like our coaching for performance process. Um, so that people very quickly understand, as well as what they're going to deliver, how they do it is important to us. And then if we're recruiting sort of later in a career, we do actually put a bit more emphasis on the behavioural side of that recruitment, uh, because clearly, particularly if they're in a leadership position, we want people to be role modelling pretty rapidly the behaviours we want. And you mentioned the behaviours. Um it's integrity, inclusion, inspiration and impact, they're your four eyes. Yeah. How do you recruit against that? Well, what we try to do is look for people that demonstrate these behaviours. So below them we have a number of sort of competency-based um, behaviours we're looking for. So the, the four eyes are essentially a, a simple mnemonic to remember the type of culture that we want to have in this business. And we specifically interview against, uh, particularly in senior leadership cases, the behaviours and competences that underlie the four eyes. Excellent. And of course, diversity and inclusion is a, is a big part of EDF's ethos. Um, what do you do to drive this? Gosh, we do a lot of things. I mean, we have a very fundamental belief, hence the four eye of inclusion, that if you've got an inclusive environment, that's one where diversity will flourish. So we put equal emphasis on both trying to create an inclusive environment and to recruit and protect our diverse population. Um, we have a, a whole series of activities that support um, our diverse population. For example, we have very active employee networks in the business, which are very strongly supported by the leaders of the business. Executive sponsor each of them, I myself sponsor the sort of overarching group, the Diversity and Inclusion Action Group. Um, we, a couple of years ago now, I thought we were doing okay in this field and wanted to benchmark ourselves against other companies. So we applied for and ended up being one of only four companies in the UK to achieve the um, gold standard for diversity and inclusion. Um, that standard actually, interestingly, isn't any longer available to achieve. So next time round, to try and make sure that we're still keeping up uh, in the pack, we're going to apply for the National Equality Standard. Okay. which we're hoping to achieve in 2015. And that, a bit like the gold standard, has a whole raft of specific standards that you need to meet in order to achieve it. Some of them are very, very challenging. But the belief we have is that it's not just about sort of chasing awards and so on. The belief we have is that these standards are based on real sort of knowledge of if you can achieve against each of them, you are by definition creating an inclusive environment which will by definition lead to you being able to not just attract but retain diversity. So we have a real belief in that. Um, other things we do um, that come to mind instantly, for example, we had a really, really powerful BAME mentoring program in our uh, Barnwood office. Barnwood is a very big um, centre of expertise for us in the nuclear part of our business. 
And one of the things that we felt and our BAME community there, particularly of engineers, were saying to us is that something wasn't working for them to be able to put their best foot forward. So what we tried to do is to set, well, what we did do actually, is set up an, a, a mentoring program with those people. Um, as a result of which, many, many, many of them, more than was happening in the past, are able to go through into sort of various talent development processes that they were otherwise just not getting into. So we've got so many things going on in this space. Um, I suppose just sort of using the inclusion and diversity banner broadly, the national equality standard is a very good indicator in our opinion of all the things that we're doing and um, so we're by no means there yet and it's going to be one of those constant journeys I think um, but we're doing our best and if I, if I reflect on the impact of everything we're doing, you know, I think we need to do a lot more if we're going to really cement diversity into our business so you know we don't yet have um, we've got targets for what we'd like to achieve um, they're not sort of written stone they're sort of aspirational targets mm. but we're quite away from that in terms of you know the numbers of women or BAME uh, candidates in particular fields and leadership positions but we're working on it and we are committed to it. Well, I guess it's difficult being in the energy sector and, and Having engineers and, and things like that is a is a difficult area to, particularly you know women. It's it's hard mm. because you're not getting the the pipeline from mm. say the, the graduate level. The population that's available to us is by almost definition very male and white. Yeah. Um, so we are really putting a lot of effort uh, behind our recruitment uh, drives in to, to get difference into our company. And I think uh, last year it's true to say we had 31% of our STEM graduates intake were women, oh. uh, which is a much larger percentage than you know the total STEM graduate uh, female population. Um, we haven't actually this year been able to do as well as that, uh, but we're going to be putting things in place to make sure that next year we continue on that journey of attracting as many people with protected characteristics as we can into this business. Um, even though you're absolutely right, there's not so many yeah. of them in the in the population at large. And being an energy provider, obviously you have a huge responsibility to look after the environment, and so your corporate res social responsibility is is quite high. Mm -hmm. What kind of things are you, are you doing there? We do. I mean, we're very aware of our responsibility as a big employer in the UK, and we're also distributed throughout the UK. Mm -hmm. So we're not just sort of a London centric employer, for example. And we do quite a lot and enjoy doing quite a lot in the communities in which we operate. And um, I'm, I suppose there'd be a, a few examples I could give. Um, we try to sort of encourage our employees to be a force for good, which I know is a, <laughs> a bit of a cheesy strap line, but actually um, there's a lot of intent behind it. Yeah. Uh, for example, we um, allow each of our employees, in fact we encourage each of our employees to take two days off a year in something called our Helping Hands programme so that those people get an opportunity to work in their local communities whether it be to help with schools or playground building or wasteland clearance or whatever. Um, we have a really interesting programme here off the back of um, the Olympic sponsorship that we did in 2012 called Company Makers and it came from the idea of the Games Makers mm. and we have 500 employees out of our 15,000 both last year and again this year, um, engaged on activity that is over and above their day job, and we, we again allow six days up to six days a year with business um, agreement, obviously, um, for them to get involved in all sorts of things that they wouldn't ordinarily get involved with, both to help the community but also to help the business. Mm. So that would be another good example where we sort of put our money where our mouth is because we do really genuinely understand that importance of the sort of social position we hold in the UK. Um, I guess the other element of it would be, or an, an, an another element of it, would be um, some of the work we do, and again I'm going to quote an example from Barnwood because it is a very big employer locally in Gloucester, uh, in the Gloucestershire area, uh, work we do with something called the Star, a place called the Star College, where we've given um, opportunities to disabled young people 
to get work experience with us in Barnwood. It's been a, such a positive experience both for them and for the employees involved with that. Um, and actually, as a result of it, quite a lot of the people that we gave internships to, I think there were 10 of them, I think eight of them are actually now working for us. Oh, brilliant. So it's really worked extremely well. And as I say, it's a win-win all round because I think, you know, having to um, think about other people in the way that you have to if you're working with somebody whose needs are different from yours actually adds something to the culture and it adds something to the business and hopefully we're adding something to the community as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much for, for taking the time to speak with us. You've got a lot Thank of interesting you, things going on um, in the company and uh, I wish you all the luck with uh, the accolades that I'm sure will come your way. <laughs> Thank you.